Let's talk Biden and RFKJ for a second. Joe Biden is an angry, angry man. So says Axios in its latest drop, um, which is entitled Biden's Private Fury. In public, President Biden likes to whisper to make a point. In private, he's prone to yelling, get off my lawn, and more. Behind closed doors, Biden has such a quick trigger temper, reports Axios, that some aides try to avoid meeting alone with him. Some take a colleague, almost as a shield, against a solo blast. The president's admonitions include, God damn it, how the F don't you know this? Don't effing BS me. This is the Megyn Kelly cleaned up version of Joe Biden's language. I would never say these words, as everyone knows. And get the F out of here, according to both current and former Biden aides who have witnessed and been on the receiving end of such outbursts. Bursts. The private eruptions paint a more complicated picture of Biden <laughs> than his carefully cultivated image as a kindly uncle. Well, not for most of us. <laughs> they go on to say, Dave, no one is safe and give specific examples about what he does, including try to bully young staff where he just keeps trying to exhaust their knowledge until he stumps the chump to make them squirm and feel uncomfortable. Uh, I could go on. But this it's an interesting look at, you know, Uncle Joe. Yeah, I mean, look, that, that's been a very carefully curated image for Joe Biden. We know that this is the guy who would very intentionally swim naked in front of female, you know, social security or no, social security on um, uh, secret service agents. Um, we, we have some knowledge uh, of his temper uh, from some of the things that, that we've seen on the laptop and, and other places. But Generally speaking, you know, I, I do sometimes get the sense that we go a little overboard with the with the Joe Biden's lost it. He doesn't know what he's doing. I I, I wonder sometimes if if that's all. Remember the the mobster um, who would walk around in a bathrobe and pretend like he didn't know where he was. Wasn't um, it John so Gotti? That, no, it wasn't John Gotti. It wasn't John it was, Gotti? Oh, I can't can't believe I can't remember. Um, I'll come up. Right, my my crack Chan, team will look it, it was, up. But I can't remember his last name. But yeah, I mean, look. Biden knows about the sketchy things that that Hunter's done. Right? We, we all know that um, there is a different Joe Biden than the one that we see on TV. And I think that the American people are starting to see it. Now, what's curious about the fact that we're starting to see this from more liberal or mainstream outlets uh, is the possibility that he's being thrown under the bus a little bit, that there are real mm. concerns that he's going to be a problem in the general election. And maybe now is the time that he needs to get a little bit kneecapped uh, to, to get somebody like a Gavin Newsom uh, sniffing around the race. The He is having troubles on that front, Stu. I mean, he's over there meeting with King Charles today in the UK. And uh, take a look at this video where Ch King Charles is like having trouble getting the president of the United States to move. Here they are together. King Charles is there. He's like, over here. Oh, over here, sir. Here. This way. Come on. It's not time to chit-chat with the guard. Here we go. That's it. You got it. <laughs> and Biden's gait is so unsteady. I mean, he's really telling us he's going to do six more years of this, Stu, and you take one look at him and you think, uh, I got questions. I have many, many questions. And it's funny because you, the way that, that Trump was sold to everyone, uh, informed why Biden was the nominee and why he became president. We were told that this was a return to normalcy. And everything about this has been a lie. It's not a return to normalcy. It has been crazier and crazier and more erratic than anything we've ever seen before. We were told this is a guy of the utmost competence who had who was going to be to make every move uh, the, the right way in foreign affairs, for example. And we see Afghanistan, what's gone on with Ukraine and so many other things. Uh, we were told this guy was the ultimate family man, right? And here's a guy who won't even acknowledge his seventh grandchild, won't even acknowledge this poor little four-year-old girl exists. She had no input into what Hunter Biden's activities were. You know, this is, this is a... We were told this guy was a good guy. And I think that's kind of fundamentally where many people in the middle of the 2020 election that didn't have partisan ideology fell. They saw Donald Trump. They didn't like the things that he said or they believed some of the hype on some of the allegations against him or whatever it was. They didn't like him. And they said, you know what? I'll go with this normal family man who will at least be competent and won't be yelling at people and he won't be tweeting so much. Well, 
I mean, you've cut the tweets down by a significant percentage, and I don't know that that was worth it because everything else you were promised with Joe Biden, you've received the opposite. And I just, you know, the the left wants this to be a Trump Biden contest because they just hope people will remember that feeling. They didn't like Donald Trump. Maybe when he's on, on TV again, they'll all remember they don't like him and instead will ignore what uh, Joe Biden has done and his performance has been like the past few years. If this election's about Joe Biden, I just don't know how he could win it. I mean, it's crazy because he's he's 80 years old now, Dave. Trump is 77. Look at Trump in Iowa going into the Dairy Queen. I mean, completely slaying, as my 12-year-old daughter would say, slay queen, uh, slay the day, slaying the crowd. Look at the difference with three years and just the vibrance you know, of each man. Watch. Everybody wants a blizzard. What the hell is a blizzard? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and take care of the people, okay? Will you take care of them for me? I will do the blizzard thing, all right? Just so funny. And then he hands out the blizzards. And then let's let's not forget what happened when he went in front of the UFC uh, to watch a match the other day. Watch this. Look at that. Look at that. He's walking out to Kid Rock's American Badass while Joe Biden's like, King Charles, steady me, old chap. Where do I look? What should I do? Look, look I, I I mean, Trump is, I, I know these guys from New York. I mean, Trump is just one of these guys. He likes to party. He likes to be the center of attention. He always has. You can go back to the 80s. You can go back to Studio 54. Um, this is who Trump is. He's clearly... A, a much more spry uh, 77 than Joe Biden is, uh, you know, uh, at 80. So I, Democrats keep saying that that's the contrast that they want, that they that they think Biden's better off, I guess, because he already won in 2020. But I think they should be a little careful what they wish for as far as that goes. And I do think it's worth pointing out because I, 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 I've been having a hard time trying to figure out why more Democrats aren't saying maybe we do need a primary. I think it's important to remember that Joe Biden is in many ways the third term of Barack Obama. Uh, and, and those are the people he has around him. Those are the people who run his White House. And so that that may be the answer, that the old Obama team that has been in control of the Democrat Party for, what, 16 years now, uh, that they're not ready to, to hand over control to a Gavin Newsom. Uh, and I'm starting to wonder if that's part of the dynamic that that's keeping everybody behind Joe Biden cuz i mean mm. it's yeah i mean he looks ridiculous it, right he he truly looks feeble Stu. you look at that video with kim charles he looks feeble and of course we could we could spend an hour just butting the sound bites together and the videos together to show similar instances and trump is robust and ron DeSantis is in his mid 40s i mean forget trump i mean DeSantis is a young fit you know, life ahead of a man who's got basically toddlers in the governor's mansion down in Florida. So this is the this is quite the pickle for the Democrats because they know it. And maybe maybe Dave's right. Maybe the Axios piece and some of the other like questions that are starting to percolate are the reasons behind it. Look, you did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and pulled your business through the pandemic. And now doing the tough thing could qualify you for up to $26,000 per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Government funds are available to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. This is not a loan and you don't have to pay it back. The program's complicated, but no one knows more about it than the CPAs and tax experts at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do all the work and share a percentage of the cash they get you. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify, including those who took PPP loans, even if you had increases in sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Now let covidtaxrelief.org help get you up to $26,000 per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org. That's covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.